ऑनरेबल रक्षा मंत्री श्री राजनाथ सिंह जी चीफ ऑफ द आर्मी स्टाफ जनरल बिपिन रावत चीफ ऑफ नेवल स्टाफ एडमिरल करमबीर सिंह चीफ ऑफ द आर्मी स्टाफ एयर चीफ मार्शल भदौरिया सेक्रेटरी जी डी आर एन डी एंड चेयरमैन डी आर डी ओ डॉक्टर सतीश रेड्डी एमिनेंट साइंटिस्ट डिस्टिंग गेस्ट members of the media ladies and gentlemen it is indeed my very proud privilege to be here in this view on this 41st directors conference drdo has a very seminal role that it has played in making india strong and secure to be in the galaxy of the eminent scientists who have contributed their might of which i had a first hand knowledge for the last 5 and a half years that i had been around and i must compliment them on this great day it's also a very special day because this is our anniversary of one of the great indian luminary who had contributed so much in so many diverse ways for making this country strong ladies and gentlemen much has been said and rightly so about the role of technology i don't think that i would like to emphasize too much on that because that is obvious but i'm just reminded about 13 years back i had undertaken a study and published a research paper on comparative studies of warfare in ancient civilizations it was an interesting study that how the people more than 2000 years back were fighting the wars and in that i came to know that there was a very revolutionary invention that was done by a very ancient people that was attaching the stone to the sling and that's how i wrote down the article stone and the sling to the satellites when he was able to attach the stone to the sling with the cord that he made of some vegetables of the herbs that he had grown together he found the reach of his stone had gone many many times more and from that time onwards there was the war horses the setra upon that the gunpowder and today now we talk about the space we talk about satellites we talk about electronic warfare and others but one thing has remained common in all these there's a common strand that the armies that were better equipped always called the shots and decided the destiny of the mankind and the armies who were better equipped were always the one which had the higher technologies wherever india's own historical experience on this this is not the occasion for me to delve on that has been as very sad the things that is why we had learnt those things we did come to the strap we come to the gunpowder we did come to this thing but we were the runners up and this is a game where the winner takes it all there is no trophy for the runners up either you are better than your adversaries or you are not there at all in the modern world technology and finance technology and money are the two things which are going to influence the geopolitics who will win ultimately will depend upon who has got the preponderance over their adversaries on these two counts and in of the two technology is more important not defense technology is a very complex phenomenon actually all technologies are complex in their, in their own way but defense technology is not only that it has got to remain updated with the latest that is happening in the field of science and technology then try to see that how it can be improvised and innovated to meet the requirements of the defense it should also be able to understand the capabilities of the adversaries 
it should also be able to appreciate the real battlefield conditions because it has to apply these technologies to succeed in those real battlefield conditions and most importantly that since it is not a money making exercise it doesn't have an unlimited budget it has got to find ways to achieve all these objectives within the given resources now that makes it very very challenging and i must take this opportunity to compliment the drdo which despite all these challenges and many others which are attached to that have done a great service to the country from 1958 that it had been established last five years had been particularly very commendable and they have done very outstanding work and of course there are many that i can talk about but the um, there's a whole series of the things and some of the contemporary things probably i may not like to mention but if we go through the whole history of this thing the development of the integrated missile uh, um, uh, uh, development program the shakti 98 the bmd program the mbt arjun radars sonars and um, the lca tejas and the the advanced uh, towed artillery guns which is a very recent system asat which i think is a very singular achievement of the drdo and i think many more such achievements were enumerated by my uh, by my predecessors and both and i think that is the real test what do the consumers feel about your achievements and the real consumers are the army navy and air force and all of them had a very commendable uh, words about you but the point is this there is nothing so good which cannot be improved but besides that the basic and the hard fact remains that india's security vulnerabilities are much greater today and they are going to be much more greater in times to come as a country attains its stature its geopolitical complexion the geopolitical requirements and its strength becomes much more important for it to conserve what it has and to prevent what it doesn't want to to, have, to happen so what is that we should be doing and i think many good ideas have been floated here i will just add couple of them to you and i think in a way they are repetition of the same ideas but i would like to just identify few of them what something was said about the niche technology that is we identify and develop niche technologies i totally agree but i would like the niche technologies to be defined in a slightly different way it is not the best technologies in the world for in our context it is not something that we cannot afford it is also not some it is not a competition of scientific excellence or award winning for the nobel prize it is something that will make india more secure so it has got to be our need based and we have got to with our forces and with our intelligence agencies and others try to make a very hard assessment that what are our hard needs and requirements which will give us an edge over our adversaries and that is a niche technology for us it is also for which we have got the capabilities there is no point in having and aspiring for something that we feel that we will have the capacity 5 years later or 2 years later we should be working towards that that for the development of those technologies which probably within time span in the real time we are able to develop also which is affordable for us for which we have got the resources it will be a good thing to identify identify in 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 consultation with with all the stakeholders in the thing that what exactly are the technologies that they would like to have and thereafter focus on them and within the real time within the thing this time overrun is uh, something that should be totally shunned by particularly by the organizations like drdo because what we say is relevant today it does not have an indefinite life span it is relevant in a certain space of time beyond that time probably if you cannot achieve that our adversaries are able to get an edge over that and then it is a redundant technology it doesn't matter much so either we do it in the real time if we feel that it is not something which is doable for us let us go for the hard thing and start redefining our niche technologies 
The second thing which I like to say is that there are a lot of new emerging technologies in very diverse areas. Now out of that, there are certain areas in which we have got a very definite advantage. Over the years, I think the DRDO, but in addition to the DRDO, other scientific platforms of the country have been able to develop many of these things. Our Council of Scientific Industry Research, our ISRO, our BAC, and many things. Let us try to see what are the core technologies which are available and how we can harness them to our, in our uh, use for defense and security. Also, the defense equipment today has become so complex and so expensive that we, we are in the regime of a distributed production. Probably nobody is making all the components of the system there. In case we can identify, and probably we cannot also get uh, out of that, and I'm very happy that even the DRDO is now using some of the private sector companies to, to leverage their advantages for that. But identify which are those critical components, which are those critical technologies that they would like to have a control with, and they would like to develop and they would like to improve upon. And also that how we can do the integration of the systems. Now, capability for integration of systems is more important than probably mastering all the systems at the same time. And this integration ta task in this country for the defense purposes and for all the other security needs, except DRDO, there is no other organization which is competent for doing that. And therefore, this system integration is extremely important, and we should be focusing more on that. We also, if we do that, this will also require our enhancing our capability for technology absorption. Technologies are available, and today a lot of technologies are available in commercially. All these things are happening, but we do not have always the capacity for its absorption. And when I say the absorption, it is not only in the laboratory conditions, the absorption in the production field. And how we can, really the DIDO can become the catalyst in this, uh, this thing, that probably will go a long way. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't think that uh, in a limited time we can go into that, but I know that in the next two days that you're going to be here, and all the directors and the eminent scientists who are here, they are going to delve upon many issues, and you will be able to come with worthwhile solutions to some of the problems that the country is facing. But the underlying fact that from stone and sling to ASAT and satellites uh, and counter-satellite these things or the space equipment, technology is going to remain at the forefront. For strong and secure India, role of the DRDO is going to be of a great importance. If you succeed, probably we will remain invincible. And the country has to emerge strong and secure. Probably the scientific community of this country will have to play the lead role. We will have to revisit also the fundamentals. Just because something has been done for too long, it does not, it does not validate it being right. And moreover, it might have been right when it was thought of probably it requires a change. And all progress is change. So don't be shy of changing the systems, procedures, processes, whether it is of the man management, it's about the administration of your laboratories, whether it's this thing like that. I think that there is a need for us to revisit the basics and see what fundamental changes can be brought about. This you'll find you can get a better value for your money if you are able to work on these things. And let us also remember that the man is at the core. Do you know in the, in the, in the history of the Second World War, who was the most important man? Who ch actually changed the course of history? Or the, or the course of events in the Second World War? Probably no one here would be knowing this thing. He was a man, he was a young scientist who died very young, at the age of 44. His name was Alan Turing. I will some of you to go into his... Uh, uh, biographies or some of the papers that would be available. He was the man who was working in one of the research, in the, in, the, in the defense research establishment connected with that, who was able to first use the 
the very rudimentary form of computers and then developed the computer analysis for breaking the codes by which he was able to find out all the movements of the German ships and the German aircraft and forecast. He is also the father of the artificial intelligence because he collated all the information and from that he was able to predict and say that what and where, what is going to the, be the next move and how it is going to be executed by the Germans. And he was given the knighthood. He died very young, but he is the one, he said, that is, if he had not contributed, at least 30, 30, 32 million more people would have died in this war. Gentlemen, you belong to that category of warriors. And you are the warriors who really contribute to this thing. I wish you all the best in your careers, and I wish DRDO all the success. Thank you very much.